Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. This is the premiere. Show. Thank you for being here. Let me finish that statement first. So this is the very first premiere show of Patriot Speak. And what this show is going to be about is let everyone know that you're just not alone in what we're going through. The Patriots, the conservatives, the Christians are going through some heavy transitioning right now, some heavy ordeals. We know that Satan is out attacking uh, blatantly, not hiding, attacking anymore. And he is on the rage. But we know that we are stronger and we are actually winning this race slowly, but surely. And as God moves forward, we want to move forward with them. So this show, Patriots Speak, is just about that. Patriots that are going to uh, speak their voice and speak what's on their heart. We have chosen and we will continue to choose guests randomly uh, from the viewers who watches, Facebook friends, uh, basically whoever watches the show. So that's what this show is about, to let you know that you're not alone, that there are people standing behind you. There are people that are on the front line with you doing a great job. And so that's what we want to promote in this show. So we got some guests today that you may know. They're viewers just like you. And I'm going to introduce them right after we get back from this commercial break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from my pillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with a nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. This is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. The new MyPillow towels are exclusively made with 100% USA combed cotton with proprietary technology and with maximum absorbency. They dry you faster and are guaranteed to work. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled MyPillow. And to thank you for all your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. For example, you get my dog beds for as low as $19.99 or for a limited time you can get my six piece towel sets regularly $109.99 now only $39.99 the lowest price ever with your promo code hey thanks for being here uh, before i bring on the first guest i want to share the screen and show you guys something here i, I want us to stay connected those who know the history of the show and know the history of the ministry we had a YouTube channel that had over 100,000, and we were literally getting uh, over 2 million views a month. And YouTube completely deleted it. And unfortunately, I didn't have anyone's contact, so they're slowly coming along. But I created this page. It's called, what is it called? Uh, FunTVNewsletter.com. And if you will, let's see, I think I have something here. But if you will go to this, here it is, Fun tvnewsletter.com. Sign up, stay connected. So if it ever happens again, I'll be able to connect you guys. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Also, I want to say this, and then we're going to bring on the guests. We are not faith TV. And I'm saying that on purpose because there are a lot of people that mistake us for faith TV. We are faith unveiled TV. Can't forget that unveiled. We literally get phone calls once a week saying, hi, I'm looking for faith TV. And we're not faith TV. We're faith unveiled TV. And also I learned just recently that a couple of people called us and wanted to know if they were getting our, uh, if we were receiving their donations. And we said, uh, give us their name, et cetera. We looked it up and said, no, we're not. Well, I sent them to faith TV. <laughs> so faith TV, if you're listening, enjoy those donations. But anyway, we are not faith TV. We're faith unveiled TV. I think Faith TV came around later or something. But anyway, let's get started with the show. Our first guest, Ginger, and I. she's going to correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. I'm going to ask her to correct me if I'm wrong. Ginger Spinelli, if I'm saying that right. Ginger is a freelance political advocate. She's a Christian leader. She's a wife and a mother of three. After leaving her career in regional management, she discovered the life-changing power of compassion, advocacy, 
and using her voice. And we preach that all the time on this show. Use your voice. She's never one to shy away from hard hitting topics. Ginger lends her own voice to an array of political issues that are affecting the world today. And I want to bring on Ginger. Ginger, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, we uh, thank you so much for, uh, you know, we just randomly picked three guests and we just contacted them and Ginger was so kind to say, yes, of course, I'll be happy to do that. So thank you, Absolutely. Ginger, for being on the show. Absolutely. All right, well, here's the next guest. Let me introduce our next guest, Jay Bynum. He is a remnant warrior for the kingdom of God, founding member and producer of ATKN, which stands for Assemble the Kingdom Network. You can check his shows out, I think, on YouTube or, or Rumble. I think he's on Rumble. Assemble the Kingdom Network. Most of all, Jay seeks to set the captives free in all situations, worshiping the Father in spirit and truth, boldly and unapologetically, as the Spirit and the Word agrees. He's also a volunteer moderator for our live shows of Truth and Bell. You'll see his name all over the place. So let me bring Jay on. Jay, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for being here, taking time out for us. Hey, thank you for having me, Paul. I really appreciate it, brother. Absolutely. We're going to now bring on our third our guest, Shannon Reed. Shannon was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area up in Northern California. She's now living in Texas. She is a licensed chemical dependency counselor who has worked primarily with young adults and their families for over 15 years. Today, she continues her work as a representative for Toxicology Lab, and I had to say that one slow so I wouldn't mess it up, Lab Services. Shannon has served on prayer teams, youth leader, children's church, teacher, and women's group leader. Shannon has a degree in psychology and also a certificate in substance abuse counseling from uh, uh, and, from, and much more. Shannon is also, we have a prayer team. The Faith Unveiled Network has a prayer team, and Shannon is our lead prayer team uh, person. Contact her if you want to be on our prayer team. And by the way, we need you on our prayer team. So contact us. Just type in prayer team at faithunveiled.tv, and you can email us your information, and we'll add you to the prayer team. Here comes Shannon. Shannon, thank you so Hi, much for taking time. Thank you for having me. I'm with great company. And yes, we do need more prayer warriors. Absolutely. More prayer warriors on the team, the more the better. You know, we're two or three are gathered. And then the scripture says if one can put a thousand, two, ten thousand. So if we have a whole bunch of them, we can really shake Satan and shake hell and get him out of our way. So we actually have some great testimonies from our prayer team. People are getting healed. Uh, and some there's some great things happening from the prayer team. Anyway, so everyone, thank you so much for being on the show. It's so exciting for you guys to be here. Now, let's get into the topics. Um, the show is all about uh, letting people know that they're not alone. And as I stated earlier, we literally get emails uh, and phone calls from people that feel like they're all alone in this battle against the satanic forces that is hitting the world today. We know that there was a lot of things that happened in the last year uh, that we're still fighting, the last couple of years that we're still fighting. We got some things that we can't mention too much on here because YouTube may not like us <laughs> at all. So, but anyway, there's a battle that's going on, the greatest battle that I've ever seen in my life. And Satan is blatantly uh, sinning and attacking God's people. I think that they want to just remove Christians from the face of the world. But anyway, you're not alone if you're viewing and some of the emails that I get, let me jump back to that. Some people are alone in their own world that they're living in. And what I mean by that is uh, some of their family members have left them because they're called a conspiracy theorist or they're conservative or they're um, Biden uh, haters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, there is a group of people, a remnant that God has raised that is fighting this war and we are winning. I guarantee you we're winning. You cannot, if there's a, if there's a war between God and Satan, who in the world is going to win? So we have to be, take our part in it. So the question I want to, I want to ask is, um, what do you feel? And, and um, Ginger, I'll start with you. 
What do you feel God is saying to the world right now in today's society? You know, I feel like he's saying a lot right now. I feel like um, I was reading, I think I've been reading in Revelation a lot lately, which I'm sure a lot of people are. And I really feel like what he's saying is he's calling the church like back. You know, this church has gone silent for a long time. And, you know, we have, it talks about in Revelations, it talks about the lukewarm church as well. And I just believe God is just really pulling people in. He's separating the chaff from the wheat right now. And he's calling his watchmen, you know, to come forward and, and, to, and to intervene. Evil has just gone rampant for so long. Um, and, and when I say the church has gone silent, I don't mean the church as a whole. I mean, you know, a majority of the church have watered down the gospel, right? Um, because they're afraid of ruffling the feathers. They're afraid of, you know, the backlash that they're going to get um, from people. So they've just watered things down. And I just believe God is just really calling people to come forward to speak truth, right? Unapologetically and pull people out of the pit of lies that they have been in for so long and there's so many things that we have just, it's almost like if it doesn't come in our backyard, we don't really tend to it. Well, now it's in our backyard and we have no choice but to take care of it. You know, I think of all the um, topics that the church hasn't addressed, you know, for so long. And now it's literally like we have no choice at this point. We have to take action. Okay. Um, now you mentioned the church being asleep a little bit. Uh, let me go to you, Jay. What do you think about that opinion? Is the church asleep? Oh, boy, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, my thing about the church being asleep is that when, when Christ addressed the world, okay, a lot of people think that the church is separated from the world, and it's not. Uh, it should be, but it's not. And that is why you have a remnant rising up. Right. And the remnant is outside of the church. So it's hard to really put the name of church not associated with the world these days because they're acting so worldly. And they're being guided by those worldly comforts, desires, and everything that drives people's emotions and feelings. And that's what they're being driven by right now. And unfortunately, that's not what God, God called us to be led by. He called us to be led by the Spirit. And that is where I believe the church is going wrong, is they don't know how to connect with the Spirit of the Most High God. And when they meet people who have the Spirit of the Most High God, to them it almost seems cult-like. Mm. Because they're not willing to humble themselves and see that there's a difference between traditional Christianity and Spirit-led Christianity. And I don't, that it's not all their fault because it's not being taught to them. Yeah. So I think that's, the, that's really where we're at with the church. There's a difference between, and, I, and it's more defined today than it ever has been, but there is a difference between the word church and ecclesia. And the remnant is part of that ecclesia that's rising up. And which, which is going to lead me into the very next question I want to direct to, to Shannon. The church needs to change. God spoke to me years ago and said, look, tell the church to get rid of their three points, three songs and a prayer and dismiss. That's not what God wants right now. God wants the book of Acts to come alive. He wants the he wants conviction to come back into the church. And where I feel that the church started shifting the wrong way is when I grew up in every church that you attended, there was what there was a bench up front called the altar. And that altar was about 18 inches high, made out of wood. And that's where you went to do your ugly cry. I mean, you just, you gave everything to God right then and there. And you know what? You didn't get up after five or 10 minutes. You, you didn't, you didn't get up until God touched you and moved. And that's where I, I was born again and felt the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues at that altar. And I was there for 45 minutes and 30 minutes of that was speaking in tongues at nine years old. Wow. So, I think that the altars need to come back, and I think that uh, conviction needs to come back. 
and the book of Acts needs to come back. So, Shannon, um, where do you think the church should be? Or, oh, Ecclesia, or it's got to change. Yeah. And where, and you know, where do you see the change? Ginger really hit it on the head when she said the word lukewarm. And last night I was praying that the Holy Spirit would bring things to remembrance to me if there, things need to be brought to remembrance. And I remember today that pre virus, I got such an impression of the story of the parable of the 10 virgins with such a feeling of like a warning. And it was, wasn't just for me personally, but it almost felt like this is, this is the last time I'm going to tell you, like, you're only going to hear this once the way I'm going to show you. And I just knew enough to know I'm not stupid. If I'm going to hear it the way I heard it, I'm getting my act together. I don't know what's coming. I still don't. But for almost two years now, I don't know what that meant. Forgive me if I'm talking too long to get to the point. But just today, I really got that. And I'm not talking about the rapture. And I know that that story is often associated with the rapture. It was about staying full and being full. It was about not being lukewarm. The being lukewarm, I don't want to use the word scared. It, Texas, I, I see a whole nother breed of Christian that really concerns me that says, I love going to church on Sunday, but I know how to have fun on Saturday night. All, all around me and with everything that's going on, that's a big concern to me. Where do I see the church going? The church needs the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. it, it, Jesus said, it's better for me to go away so I can send the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be filled so that everywhere we go, we're changing atmosphere. Having the Holy Spirit is unlimited in whatever i just told the holy spirit about three hours ago i never want to be someone that doesn't allow you in the grocery store that doesn't allow you at the gas station that doesn't allow you on this show that i'm doing with you that doesn't allow you wherever i am i don't want to be someone that shuts you down right because i like a little adventure probably the entire remnant does it's probably part of our dna but the holy spirit can do anything anytime anywhere and I would love to see the church give express the unique expression of however he wants to express himself in each one of us, the way he created us. God made all of us different and unique. That's when it's, it's just going to be exciting. And when the Holy Spirit can take over a service, you know he's leading it. Right. And it supernaturally is done in order, powerfully. I hope that somewhat answers your question, but I can kind of get, I'm a little passionate about the lukewarm thing right now because yeah. it, it it's needed. And it's something that's hurt me as a member of the body of Christ. It has. Having seeker friendly pastors right. in, in a variety of ways. It's, it's not done any of us any good. And it's, it's hurt the very people that they've been given charge to protect. Right. We have even got away, you know, um, when I grew up, the word Holy Ghost was just the common word that you used in church. We even got away from the word ghost because mm -hmm. it might offend somebody. You know, the church needs to stop worrying about offending people. The church job, by, in my opinion, the church should be offending people. Mm -hmm. They should be offending people with the word of God. And if the word of God offends you, that's a trigger in your own heart that you need to change. Right. Not the church, not the word of God, you, that we need to change. So it's, it's very important, and you're right, that the, the church, the ecclesia, it needs a great change. It needs a great movement in it. And I think, and, and let me ask this question. Let me go back to gender. Uh, there, I, I'm hearing some prophets say, uh, and I've even said it myself, and God showed me that there's a great revival coming. And in order for the ecclesia or the church to change, it has to grab hold of this idea that it's been the church has been misplaced we we need to stop the the seeker friendly stuff and we need to stop being a a stage and bring back a platform and a altar and and you know i go to churches and it's it's like it's this big stage it's a big show up there 
Uh, I personally am old school. I don't like the lights turned off in church. I don't like all the big lights because uh, when I want to worship with the congregation, I want to see the congregation. I want to be with the congregation. But I think that there's a great revival coming. Uh, how's this going to start? How is this great revival going to start? Who's it going? Who who are the participants? So, Ginger, uh, give me your opinion on that. How is this great revival? How do you see it starting the great revival? I want to answer that question, but I just want to piggyback one thing on sure. what Shannon you had said, and you know, I feel like going back to what we were talking about really quickly. There's a spirit of fear, right, that's hovering in the church. You know, the church is so focused on the fear of offense, right? They're focused on the fear of people not coming because they need those ties because they're a lot of these churches are growing bigger. It's about building funds. It's about, you know, um, Starbucks inside the, the churches and all these elaborate bookstores and cafes. And it's we're, we're all about building, building, building. So they're afraid of offense because they need that money coming in. Right. So they've diluted the message so right. that they can keep the pews filled up. But the problem is, is that there's no change happening in the body of Christ because of it. And so, you know, one of the things that, um, as you said, the revival, you know, one of the things that I believe is going to really get it started is the movement that's happening right now, obviously. The, the watchmen that are rising up and they're speaking out and they're finding a way for their voice to be heard. But the other thing is we have to stop grieving the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has been grieved for so long mm -hmm. and stifled, and we have to stop doing that. We have to start letting change happens when we allow the Holy Spirit to operate, when we allow the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost to move. And I just feel like there's such a, a just a stagnation that's happening. And I feel like as pastors or just people in general start rising up, and they're they're moving in the call of God and they're saying yes. I feel like where I'm seeing even in my area, I like I said before, I'm seeing people that are not even in the church that are being moved by this movement that's happening and they're coming to know Jesus because they're being awakened to the corruption around them and they're seeing that there is evil. And if there's evil, then there has to be God, right? Because if there's a devil out there, there has to be a God because you can't believe in the devil and not believe in God. And so there's a movement that's happening and people are seeing good and evil being fought out before their eyes. And the movement, I believe, is not in the church. I don't believe it's in the church. I believe it's out of the church. I believe it's it's the people that are just waking up to see what's happening um, in the world today. And those are the people that I see on the uh, just on the lines fighting hard. I see people who are just brand new saved and they're fighting hard. And you got Christians who have been saved for 30 years and they're just sitting there ignorant, saying nothing. <laughs> and it's it's not going to be the church that's going to start this movement. It's going to be and I and I say it's going to be the new church rising up. So that's my thoughts opinion. on what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Jay? You think it's going to be the ecclesia that's going to take charge? I believe the ecclesia has already taken charge. Yes. Yeah, exactly. The the ecclesia has already taken charge because, you know, I, I want to address your 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 question to her is the the great revival that's coming. Are we good stewards of the revival that's already come the first time, which is yeah. the Holy Spirit? Oh, I feel that on me. Mm. Are we good stewards of what we already have available to us? Yeah, come on. That's so what every, it's going to take. So everyone wants a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. What about what is already here? That's all I've got to that's all I've got to add to that. That's the spirit speaking out to everyone listening right now. We we need to take a look inwardly open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit, the movement of the spirit so that he will like uh, Ginger said, no longer hinder the Holy Spirit's movement upon this land and this nation and in this world. And that is really is where everything has gone wrong. We have eliminated God. We've eliminated the voice of Jesus in every facet of our lives. And it is time to listen and actually speak less. Wow. Very powerful. And that's so true. 
What do you think, Shannon? I just, exactly. The only thing I really would love to add is that we need to bring back the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was reading in Acts this morning, and in every situation, it was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I am, am guilty of one of my best friends was recently born again a couple months ago. And she stayed with me for a few days. And I'm thinking about, you know, okay, well, that's the natural next step, right? Why, did I, why would I even wait? I robbed her of an opportunity. I robbed the Holy Spirit of an opportunity. And the Holy Ghost wants to get into everybody. Holy Ghost. Yes, I said ghost. <laughs> wants to be in everybody. We need to get the Holy Ghost in everybody immediately. So true. It, it's so true. It, it's it's almost heartbreaking that that's not a given that we just I mean, that just also tells you how powerful it is. But I honestly feel like that is such that's the best thing that we can do to every new convert, to everyone we come in contact with, to every show. I was reading a book by Reese Howells, who was early 1900s, called Intercessor. And it was so fascinating to, it made me realize that Pentecost movement is the 1900s. Like the whole speaking, I don't know what happened in the 1800s, but it was like brand new to them. And they'd wait around for weeks. And the, he said the greatest mistake or the greatest hindrance that happened when was there weren't enough nurses for the new converts he called them nurses there weren't enough people to disciple and tend to these new converts to get them rooted and, and stuff happened but i really took note of that and when i read that it, i was really moved in my heart i i in a moment, I felt like I wanted to call everybody I know. Went, okay, we got to be ready for. Let's not make the same mistake as what happened in the. Early, we can always learn from history. Let's not make the same mistake that they did in the early 1900s. Let's get ready and do what we can to make sure they're immediately filled, they're immediately discipled. Let's like what Jay was saying. Be prepared to be really good stewards. Right. That's about to come away. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I do know that God really really touched my heart and made that very clear to me when i read that is make sure they get what they need i think i think we need to be filled with the holy ghost so strong that we become like peter that we can just walk by somebody in our shadow we'll start touching people and and that's been you know i've been uh, those who know me know that my pet my dad was a pastor for 61 years and we grew up with the holy ghost and we grew up speaking in tongues and seeing miracles. In my ministry, I've seen tons and tons of miracles. And I've always prayed, and I think we should all pray, that we be so filled with the Holy Ghost that people just, they feel the energy when we walk by. They feel the electricity when we walk by. They're healed when we walk by. I think, and, and maybe revival is not even the word to use, mm -hmm. because revive is raising the dead. Mm -hmm. and, and so may, maybe, maybe so, but... Maybe we need a transformation within our own hearts before a revival can take place or before anything can take place. And we sincerely, sincerely need to repent daily that we empty our hearts of anything that's contrary to the word of God and fill our hearts up with the word of God. It's so important. I feel that message is so strong today uh, for the ecclesia. For the church, I've almost, <laughs> I'm almost at a point where I'm giving up on the church because the church, you know, I've talked to a lot of pastors and they're just, they're not responding. They're not responding at all. So I think it's so important. And I think Jay's message was, was strong. And, and I hope pastors are watching this. And I hope pastors get convicted in their heart that we need to be good stewards of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost right now. And that's where I think pastors have failed. And I think that's where they have really let the sheep gone astray is because they have let down the true meaning of the Holy Ghost in their hearts. And it's, it's I, I, I think it's right. I think I think maybe revival might be the wrong word or maybe revival is the right word. But anyway, the dead need to raise 
and, and, and I'm talking about us in the church, and I'm, that, that's pretty much where the dead people are right now, is something needs to fall upon those dry bones. Mm -hmm. Something needs to fall upon those dry bones that are sitting and not making any noise and not rattling, and they're just they're dead. Something needs to wake, up, wake them up. So uh, let me ask, let me go into this question. Where do, what should the remnant do right now? Uh, in order now, our job and what we want to do is spread as much truth as we can. So, Jay, where do you see what? Where, what should the remnant do today? As they're watching this, what what can we do? We're in a timeline. There's nothing new under the sun. What's that timeline? Mm -hmm. The timeline is the exit from Egypt. Okay, and right now, even part of the remnant, we're waiting on Moses to come down with the standard to be raised. That's what we're doing right now. We're waiting on Moses to come down with a standard to be raised. God is going to deliver us a new standard for and raise a new standard for our freedom. But you got people down here in the world worshiping the calf. That's where we're at. People down here are looking for life in what is lifeless. The remnant, part of the remnant, is still worshiping the calf. They're waking up slowly. Okay, when the word of the Lord comes down from the, and from that mountain, he is going to set the captives free. He's going to set the whole nation free. But as a, um, as a wise letter once said, the end isn't going to be for everyone. Mm. Okay, the end's not going to be for everyone. The end is going to be for those who are waiting on God and putting their legs on the faith like you preach about so much, Paul. I love that when you say that. Because when you don't put your legs on your, the legs on that faith, it's it's literally dead, or you're distracted by the calf. So that's why everybody right now wants a word here and a word there and a word here and a word there. They want to know what's going next because they're staring at the calf. It looks pretty, it looks pretty, but it's lifeless. So that's where we're at. That's where the remnants at. Part of it is waiting for a move of God, and the other part. Is having a hard time waiting. Yeah, there, there's yeah. a group of people that I call profit chasers, and, and that's kind of what they're looking. They're always they're, they're going from they used to go from church to church to church to church looking for that word, that special word. But now they're going from video to video to video to video looking for that special word. The special word is in the Bible, people. It's in yes. the Bible. Yeah. Ginger, yes. what do you think? What do you think? You what? know, there's so many goodness, so many good things going on right here. I got like three things to touch on. So I, I have to hit on what you're saying is those people who are chasing that prophecy. Right. Um, and you got all these pastors coming in and they're giving like a word to like 20 different people and they got these dates set up and everything. And I almost feel like that's a cult, to be honest with you. I feel like it's very occultish and I don't believe that it's biblical. And I, I, I strongly agree with Jay, um, you know, going back to what I was saying in the beginning, you know, Revelation talks about the different types of churches. You have the corrupt church, the faithful church, the dead church and the lukewarm church. And I believe that God is moving in the faithful church. Right. The people mm -hmm. that are just for Christ, I live for Christ, I die. We're, we're ready. And then you have a lot of people who are it's this fear game that they're chasing more numbers here on earth. They're so consumed with adding days to their life that they're willing to almost, I feel like give up their truth and their salvation to add days to their life because they're so afraid. And then you have other people who are just stepping in and they're like, you know what? I'm going to do what God calls me to do because I know that this is not my home, right? I know that I have a job to do here. I'm going to mm -hmm. do that job and I'm going to, I'm going to do it well and I'm going to finish this race because I know eternity is way longer than the, the place that I'm staying here. And I think people need a reminder. This is temporary, y'all. This yeah. is not your home. You can do all the things that you think um, to gain an extra couple of months and you can line up because you're afraid of death and all these things. But at the end of the day, we need to remember like we have a job here to do. We're getting ready for our forever home. And we need to keep our eye on the prize. And there's so many distractions and there's so many things that are coming. And I pray every day over myself. I'm like, Lord, help me to finish this race because I want to hear 
You know, I want to hear God welcome me in. And I think that's the thing that we got to remember. We got to keep our eye on the prize. You know, there's so many things that are happening. There's so many distractions. You know, we need to stay in our lane and keep our focus on what we need to do for the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. That's, that's it. Period. You know, so, um, you know, for me, um, there was one other thing I wanted to say about fear. Um, there is this thick, just stifling spirit of fear hovering the world right now. Everyone is so afraid, you know, they're afraid of, you know, what the media tells them. They're afraid of, um, you know, they can't work if they don't do this, if they, you know, there's just so much fear going on. And I really just, and this is to the viewers, I just really want people to take a breath, right? And if you know Jesus, if you know Jesus, then that spirit of fear should not reside in you because he did not give us a spirit of fear, right? That does not reside in you. And you need to take every thought captive and you need to cast that thing down right now in the name of Jesus, okay? Because that is not of God and we are not to live in fear. And so I just, right now, I just feel like we just have to, as a body, we have to come against this spirit because it is consuming people. I can't tell you how many people I know who were, you know, very hardcore set. And as time has gone by, I've watched people slowly one by one cave. And these are people I thought, like, I looked up to some of these people and it, it's just been heartbreaking to watch them fall. And just because the fear has gripped them. And so, you know, that would be my one thing I just want to say to people is just, you know, if you're feeling fear, get in the word, right? Come against that spirit. We have power and authority given to us through Christ Jesus. Take that authority and 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 utilize what God has given us. Pray in tongues, you know? And that's 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 my heart right now for people because my my heart breaks, right? Because, you know, so many strong people who are just falling into the into the enemy's trap. And I just want to see people restored because I don't believe people want to choose to live that way. I believe that they right. have fell, fallen into the media trap. They've fallen into the enemy speaking into them. And so just, it just, it hurts me to see that, you know? I agree a hundred percent. The fear is uh, enormous and uh, we have to break that fear. We have to break it. Uh, and, and every time we turn around, the government is trying to divide us and they're using fear mm. to do that. And, 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 and I think as children of God, true children of God, we need to rebuke that fear, yes. not only in our own lives, but around our surroundings and around the world, because that fear is an all consumed fear that they keep pushing the media, the government keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. But you're hundred percent right. It's not of God. It is totally not of God and it needs to be broken. What do you think, Shannon? You think how, how do you think we should break some fear? I am like rubbing up right now. The first time she, she mentioned fear and the pastors on the inside of me was who are you bowing to and what are you bowing to? And I'm so fortunate that God gave me a revelation of this earlier this year. Because no one talks about it. We hear more people talking about Jezebel than need to even mention Jezebel. But no one mentions Ahab. Mm. And there's a lot of Ahabs. Yeah. And people forgot God was angrier at Ahab than any other king. And the reason why is because Ahab was king. That was his title. That was his position. And he gave it up. And the only person responsible for my identity and who God created me to be is me. And if anyone else is trying to manipulate me, control me, intimidate me, I know exactly who you are and I'm not bowing. Fear is a spirit. And I, the bowing to it's got to stop. Yeah. Oh, I, I, that's the nice way <laughs> and, and we're bowing to that fear whatever your fear is people are bowing to it you know i, I feel led in my spirit to do this right now anybody want to lead us in prayer against this fear that's attacking the world just jump right in yes lord father god 
God, we just thank you so yeah. much, God, for this time of coming together. And Lord, as we pour out our hearts to you, Father God, and we're just so stirred up and so concerned for your the body, Lord God, for this world. And so, Father, as fear is just swarming in around us, Lord God, Father, we just pray right now. God, we come against that fear right now in the name of yes. Jesus. And Father, yes. we break it right now by the yes. blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray for everyone right now who is just being tormented with this spirit. Father, wherever they are, God, we just pray it over them right now. Father, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we repent right now Amen. in come the on. name of Jesus. We mm -hmm. repent for being silent. Father, we repent for allowing this to just come into our nation and our world, Lord God. And Father, we repent in the name of Jesus. And yes. Father, we renounce any involvement with fear right now. Father, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray right now that men and women will rise up, Lord God. And Father, they'll take their stance in the kingdom, Lord God. And Father, they'll do the things that you have called them to do, Lord. And Father, that they will not grieve the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be allowed to work and operate and break generational curses, Lord God, break soul ties, Father God, heal, set free and deliver people, Lord God, because people yes. are going to submit to the Holy Spirit. Yes. God, we thank you. We love you. And we praise you, Jesus. And we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Wow. Powerful. Amen. It's important. Well, I can speak for myself. I have absolutely felt fear. But when I start to feel afraid, I deal with it immediately. Wish and good. there's not a day that goes by where, you know, I was kind of laughing to myself this morning. You know, when we talk about putting on the armor of God and people think that they're putting on the armor of God, just saying the scripture. And I think back to like my children's church days and we just like, we put it on like this and we think we have it on. But the armor of God includes the sword of the spirit. And that's it. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Greater is he that is in me yes. than he that is in the world. Yes. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going over. I'm not going at like the word coming out. And it never, ever stays. But if there happens to be anybody watching that we all deal with fear, we're not immune to that. It happens. But the Holy Spirit Come on. <laughs> who lives literally dwells within this earthen vessel will light you up and bring that word to remembrance. I mean, just start, I'll start quoting it and I'll get like, I have verses that I say every day and it's become one of my favorite parts to go through them because I remember, oh yeah, oh yeah, these are my promises and this is who God is. And when you're searching for words everywhere, you are robbing yourself of one of the best opportunities that there is. David beat Goliath. David killed Goliath, took down Goliath because of his relationship, because of his private time. Not because he was going around going, what's going to happen? What's everyone saying? It came out of the passion of the relationship. Yeah. Who do you think you are? And that's what we should be saying right now. Absolutely. What's going on out there? Who do you think you are to come? Sorry, I'm like, to come against the children of God, the church of God, the standards of God. Who do you think you are? Amen. Yes. And that find some fear in that. You're not going to. <laughs> you know, I, one of the questions, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna say it this way. Uh, one of the questions that I wanted to bring out today was, what do you think the biggest fear is? But I think the ultimate answer is whatever you have. Mm. Your fear may not bother me at all. And the things that I that I faced that, that, that I became fearful of may not bother you at all. So the greatest fear is the fear that you have right now mm. that needs to be destroyed. That yoke needs to the, the yoke of Christ needs to break it. And and that's what we need and that's what needs to take place right now. And that was a phenomenal prayer and a powerful prayer. Thank you, Ginger that we need to break those fears completely. And it's so true. We need to look at fear in the face and say, who do you think you are? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And fear comes from the world, not from God. So we can overcome it. And Jay, what do you? What are some steps that people can take to overcome these fears besides prayer? I am so glad you asked that question. 
It comes with the changing and the renewing of our mind when we understand why they're called the boots of peace. Okay, they're the boots of peace because fear stops you in your tracks. Mm -hmm. The boots of peace, you equip them, you make sure that they're coming from the peace that comes from the Holy Spirit, not the world, because the world will give you a false peace. Okay, who you're listening to may give you a false peace. So that's why when you're listening to something, you always test the fruits of the Spirit, which can also only be tested through time. Not just a word that you hear. But the reason why the boots, people need to equip the boots of peace and understand what they are. They're more than just a saying. They're more than just a prayer. They're a renewing of your mind that keeps you mm -hmm. moving forward. Because fear will stop you in its tracks. 100%. Paul says in his writings, the very way to revenge disobedience is with obedience. And when we have disobedience attack us and we have fear attack us, we need to hit it with the obedience of the word of God. And one of the things that I do and I practice, and this is a physical thing that I actually do, when, when there's a thought that's contrary to the word of God that comes inside my head, I literally stop thinking it and I grab a verse that is contrary to the fear. And I put that verse in me and, and I say it out loud. I say it to my heart. I say it until that fear disappears. So the best way to revenge disobedience is with obedience. And so when a contrary thought comes in, grab a word of God, grab a scripture, take a, take a verse from the Bible and begin to just repeat it and, and, and plant it into your heart because that's the greater power that we have inside of us. May I just add that's Christ-like? Yeah. That's what Christ did in the temptation. Mm -hmm. He Absolutely. used the word of God. Absolutely. Our, our, our Savior used the word of God to counteract what the enemy tempted you with. We can exactly do the same. Right. Exactly right. I think it's in Jeremiah where God says, my word is like a hammer. Boom, boom. Smashing, I can smash a rock in pieces. It's going to get rid of everything else. God's word, it, it, it's always, it's always working. It's the most creative, most energizing, you know, even through this whole pandemic, can I, I can say that word, you know. Probably not. <laughs> well, you <did. laughs> Go ahead. We're okay. It, for me personally, I'm like, okay, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to battle fear, but I also know, you know what? I'm going to build my faith in healing. I'm going to build my faith in the area that Jesus said that he bore my all sickness and disease. He said, no plague shall come out of my dwelling place. These are my promises. I declare that I walk in supernatural health and healing. I pray for wisdom. But those are things I do out of going, okay, you know what? I know that this is a strategy of the enemy and I'm going to build my faith so it's there when I need it, not just for myself. But I was just sharing with you, being on the prayer team and seeing those requests come in. I was just thinking this morning, you know what? I, I've noticed an anointing on praying for people for healing that I don't have on anything else. But... I thought it was one person in particular, and then it started happening for more. I'm like, wow, it's just so powerful lately when I'm praying for people for healing. I'm, what a coincidence that I've also been building my faith in that area. Mm. It's not a coincidence. I just kind of put two and two together. So share that little tidbit. There's definitely power in the word of God. And that's what we need to rely on. And that, you know, God has just really been moving in my heart this last month so strongly about make sure that you study what's real not what's not real you know and i did a show a, a, a few days ago about uh, bringing up the counterfeit money and how people when they when you study counterfeit money you don't study the problem you study the the, the real and the authentic and you take so much time in learning every inch of the dollar the real true dollar that as soon as you spot a fake one, it's, it's, it's just come natural because it's not real. And so many po people are focused on what's not real. And I think it's very important for us to start focusing on what is real. And that would be the word of God. When we have the word of God deep within our heart, planted within our heart, we'll know instantly what's disobedient what comes against us and what's not of God. And I think that's a great, start if people are wondering where do i start what do i do 
uh, uh, to get ready for what God is getting ready to do is read the word of God. Get the word of God so yes. deep in your heart that you'll know as soon as you hear something contrary to it, you'll know it immediately. And that's so strong and so powerful now. So I encourage the viewers and a lot of the people are asking, what do I do? What do I need to do? Where do I start? Read the word of God and get that planted in your heart. And that the word of God alone will walk you into the path that you need to walk in. Ginger, how, how important is it to read the word of God? And, and, and for the viewers out there, how important is that? It's life, you know, it is, it is, it is life. It's everything. It is, I mean, it's the living word of God and it's relevant um, in everything that you do. And, and the reason it's the living word of God is because I could read something today, right? And it not, you know, it's truth, but I may not take the same perspective. And tomorrow it could hit me like a ton of bricks because I need it exactly what it says, you know? And if people aren't filling themselves up with the word of God, then they are not going to be armored and ready for the deception that's coming because the Bible says to test things, you know, there's going to be mm -hmm. false prophets. There's going to be deception. There's going to be all these things. And if you don't know what to look for, you are going to be sadly left in the dust, you know? And I, I wanted to add one more thing that you guys were talking about. Um, you know, one of the other things that came to my mind is the last two years of the craziness that we have experienced, right? Um, within the church, you know, we've had church go from, you know, video services to no in service to you have to wear masks. Do you, you can't go to the altar. You got to sit apart from people. You can't touch people. Like the church has been a part of all this mess too. And, you know, one of the things that is sad me is, you know, you talked about back when you were a kid, they had an altar, right? You went to the altar, you boohooed, you, you got sanctified, set free, delivered. Like it just was a beautiful thing. I mean, I can remember as an eight year old, same thing, you know? And the sad thing is, is there's so much that's missing right now that the church is supposed to be, we're supposed to be providing, right? One of the biggest things that Jesus did in his ministry was he laid hands on the sick and he cast out devils. And one of yes. the other things that the church is not doing is we don't talk about casting out any devils, right? You know, we just, you know, we come in and, you know, if somebody's got something going on, most of the time they leave with it still. And the sad thing is, is there's a lot of people right now, too, that have some stuff that needs to be prayed out. And, you know, we should be rising up and we should be helping people get delivered and set free, not standing by and expecting them to do it on their own. And it's just a sad place for the church that where do these people go? Right. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? And so we need to rise up as a body of Christ and help those people. You guys were talking about, you know, getting them brought in, set free, you know, saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and all those things. And we should be making sure that these people are getting the emotional healing that they need, that they're getting delivered from these demons because the spirit of fear too. I mean, I can tell you, I was praying for this woman the other day and, you know, she was going through some fear with what's going on and she was expressing it to me. And I, we literally just prayed right there and we commanded that thing to leave and she, oof, she was loose in the name of Jesus, right? Like That's there's power do. and we need to start taking authority and, you know, as believers, people need to take authority and we have that authority to make this stuff leave. So if you're struggling, you know, with these fear thoughts, you know, Shannon was saying we take every thought captive. But if you're struggling, you know, you take authority and command that to leave. Yes. Like you have the power to do that as well. So that was just one thing I wanted to add, because there are some people that are struggling in that area and they just need to really get in and and. It's, it's more they need to take authority over that command that to leave and, and that's so important i remember growing up uh, my dad had a phenomenal gift of deliverance i mean just satan was scared of <laughs> my dad that's the only way i know how to describe it but sometimes in church a demon would manifest right there in the middle of a service huh? because they didn't hear they didn't like what was being said they didn't like what was being preached and a demon like right, right there would just start yelling out in the middle of the church. But dad would get off the platform, walk down to him, put his hands on him, and said, "Devil, you come out!" Praise now. God. And 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 that's God. that's how he handled it. And nowadays, there was, a, there was about three years ago, I visited this church where this demon manifested right in the middle of this the pastor's service, and he freaked out. He didn't know what to do. 
And so he had the ushers uh, go over and escort that person uh, outside to another room so they could get prayer. And I'm like, don't take them to get prayer. Start casting that demon yes. out right now. Yes. And, and 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 I have noticed that that there are a lot of pastors that are scared to death of a, de a demon mm -hmm. rising up. And uh, we, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be because, yeah. you know, as it flows down from the pastor, it's going to flow down into the congregation. And you're right. Authority needs to be taken. We have so much authority. I don't I believe that that maybe 90, 95 percent of the church doesn't even realize that the authority they have mm -hmm. at all. And, and, and it's, it's kind of scary, but God needs to rise up within us. Uh, okay, we have about uh, uh, a few, uh, maybe 10 minutes left. We can take another 10 minutes. Uh, anybody have any final thoughts uh, that you would like to just give the viewers? And uh, maybe we'll have another more another question or so. But uh, Shannon, do you have any final thoughts that you want to give the viewers? I'm just going back to your original purpose for doing this, and that's people feeling alone. And I know that has been me on several occasions. I don't have family close by. Everything kind of got shut down when I was still new to Texas. I have like one friend here. Um, and sometimes that gets to me. And I think that some of the, sometimes we all feel that aloneness because at the same time, we are seeking for that uncompromising place. And we're not willing to compromise. I'm not willing to go just hang out with anybody right now. And that's just for me personally. I, my number one goal is to be as prepared as I, to do what God wants me to be every day. I was reminded again today that seek first the kingdom of God. Don't worry about tomorrow. And that's another thing. If you're, if there's a word seeking person, here's a word. <laughs> Don't worry about tomorrow. Seek first the kingdom of God. Get out your Bible. Don't worry about tomorrow. Of course, use wisdom. God will show you what to do. But he'll also, he promises to provide for us. And the wounds, the healing, everything else, as much as sometimes I get sad, I'm really, really grateful that I have one more day to prepare. One of my personal prayers over this, especially this last year, has been, Jesus, you came to heal the brokenhearted. And I'm trusting that you will go deep, that you will heal every wound, every fracture, every bruise, because those are the things that the enemy likes to play on, right? Those are the things he, kind of, he can, likes to get a hook in. So I'm like, I'm going to use this time. Just when I think I'm done, something else comes up. There's a trigger. Something. Happens. I'm like, go deep, go in the things that I don't remember. And I'm grateful for that time. So in a final thought, I just want to say the purpose. If, if you're feeling alone, use this time to get to know your father and your creator. In this time, I have had some of the most wonderful experiences with my father that I've ever had in my entire life where we'll just laugh or he'll show me something in the word. I laughed at myself last night after I'm reading, Paul, it was after I got a phone with you and I was reading the first three chapters of Adam and Eve in the creation. And I got to the very last verse where it talks about the cherubim blocking, blocking the garden. And I literally felt my heart, this brokenness and I started sobbing and a part of me wanted to laugh going some people are crying because they're sad or you know something happened and I'm crying over the story about him and Eve but God let me feel his heart that day how broke like Adam was just having fun in Eden and naming all the animals and now they're they can't ever go back there again and I got to feel it for a minute and had this this time of that my father let me have and he wants to have that with all of us that's why he created us that's that's the win that's the big win for me that can't compare david said a day in your course is better than anywhere else and i just i can't in a just human to human that's what it's all about mm -hmm. that daily relationship those moments i have where i just laugh and i hope that god's laughing too and he thinks i'm funny I was crying about a week ago and I had this vision in my head where my angel is going, warrior down, warrior down right here, <laughs> warrior down. <laughs> I don't know if that really happened, but I laugh. So, that's yeah. It. Thank you so much. Yeah. Ginger, you have any final thoughts you'd like to give the viewers? I do. And, and, you know, I'm going to talk to those same people, those people who are feeling alone. Um, I'm talking to you. You've been maybe ostracized by your church, your family, your coworkers and you know, God has been calling you to 
um, a higher standard and, and calling you to faith walk, but it doesn't look like what the world is doing. And so you feel um, just alone and isolated and you feel people think you're crazy and they don't understand. And, um, you know, I would just say, burrow in, just keep planting those strong roots, like just dig in deep, you know, God has called you for a time such as this. Okay. Mm -hmm. He is raising you up. You're not crazy. You're not, you're, you're, you're not some freak because you know, you're not falling for the craziness of what's happening in the world. You are following what God is calling you to do and you will be honored for that. And so I would just tell you, get, if, if he's calling you to do a Bible study, if he's calling you to get involved in your local government, because you want to help make sure that we get a good Christian godly leaders in office do it don't wait if he's calling you to start a home group if he's calling you to do something on social i would just say do it don't wait just do it and he will make a way don't wait for the way just if he's saying to do it do it because he will orchestrate it all i know lately god's been calling me to do some stuff and it's like okay but i need this or i need that and it's like no just do it and then he's just started providing as I do it. So just keep going and just know you're not alone in this fight. There are people, brothers and sisters who are here, we're fighting. You know, we may not see each other every day, but we're fighting alongside of you, this this fight against good and evil. And um, just know that we may not know each other personally, but we're praying for you. We're praying yeah. for you, okay? Yeah. Good word, good word. Um, you said something about uh, we're being born for this time. Uh, if you guys watch the show, you guys know who Mark Taylor is and the viewers. Uh, Mark said something one time one that just, just was just brilliant. He said that you could have been born a thousand years ago, but you weren't. Mm -mm. God said, no, I'm not going to send you to earth now. I need you for a later time. Yes. And you were born and you're living now for a reason. You matter. Your voice matters. Your authority matters. Uh, your comfort level matters. The word of God matters. You matter right now. You were born for such a time as this on purpose. Yes. So important. So important. Mr. J, you got a word for us, Mr. J? I do, Paul. Um, I want to leave you guys with, with encouragement, but at the same time, it depends on where you stand. And what I mean by that is, is there was the whole nation was called to go into the promised land. But only those who gave a good report were labeled, and the generation after that was able to see it, feel it, and be part of it. And the call is really to give a good report, even in the time of the wilderness that we're in right now. Okay? And that takes faith. We're going to be in an amazing point of time coming up soon where our faith is going to be tested. And that is encouraging because after the faith is tested, you get to see the promised land. And I just want to give you guys just an uplifting message of be encouraged because we are going to see goodness back in this nation. Okay? But it's just that we have to give the good report. We have to focus on what God's doing. We have to not uh, bend to every wind of doctrine. We have to be actually bend like the whole program started out and how it's going to end with the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said to Nicodemus, for those who are filled with the Holy Spirit are as but the wind. You do not know which direction they're going or where they're coming from. That, that is being filled with the Holy Spirit is when you're unpredictable to the enemy and you have that authority because he's filled you. He has filled you with that compassion for the people, with that compassion for your nation, with that compassion for the world, because he so loved the world. That's all I've got. It's very important that we realize that this event, this things that we're going through right now, not only in America, but the world, and we are paying attention to the world more than we've ever paid attention to it before because the world is involved with this. It is not a battle of Republicans versus Democrats. It is a battle 
strictly verse uh, good versus evil completely. So there's only two kingdoms in the world, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And we have to decide what kingdom we want to be a part of. And I guarantee you the kingdom of light is going to win. Yes. When you have a battle between God and Satan, there is no doubt who's going to win. So I encourage you as you walk this fight, you walk this life, this life of faith, that you walk the word of God out into your life. The word of God, as Ginger said, is alive. It's alive. We can depend on it just like we can depend on anything. Matter of fact, what is not seen is more real than what is seen in this life. What is seen is temporal. It's going to fade away one day. And so it's very important to plant in our heart the things that are not seen, which is the word of God and the faith that we have to walk this out. And Jay, you mentioned something that my dad used to always say. My dad always say, you can't have just faith. You have to attach legs to that faith. And that's where the church needs to be right now. We need to learn to attach legs to our faith and get it moving and participate in what's going on today. And I want to thank each and every one of you and encourage each and one of, every one of you. You're not alone. These guests right here prove that you're not alone. We're in this together. We're praying for you. The body needs to pray for the body. You know, the Bible says that, that this little finger is just important as the heart and everything that goes together with this body. We're part of that body. And I encourage you to pray for each other. Lift one another up. Stop bashing on people. Stop. You know, I say this and I'm going to say it again. I say it almost every show. Do not hate people into hell, but rather love them into heaven. And that is so important right now that we have to give more love. We have to love out loud and we have to make our love louder than the enemy shows and, and, and spews their hate. We have to love out loud and be louder. So I want to encourage you to hang in there. Trust in God. Put your faith in God. Don't look at circumstances that's going around you. If you if, if you need to take a, a break, take a day off. Don't turn social media on. Don't turn your phone on. And God, please don't turn media on. Take a break. Get off of it. Get off of it for a while. <laughs> Renew your strength in the Lord and let God bring you back. That's a warrior that is carrying a sword and will lay down any Satan or any demon that comes in our path. I encourage you. Ginger, thank you so much for coming on the show and taking time. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I, it's been great. Thank you so much. Shannon, thank you for taking time out of your schedule and being on the show also. My pleasure. And Jay, you're a hero, man, in God's kingdom. Keep standing for the word of God. And you guys check out his show uh, that we mentioned earlier today. And so thank you so much for everyone. And we will see you guys on the next show.